Thank you. Welcome. God bless you. I'm Bishop Peter Gatimo. Jesus Christ is Lord. I love him. Let's pray. Father, speak now. Our hearts are open to you. The blood of Christ make way. The blood of Christ cleanse us. The blood of Christ break the yoke. And Lord, let there be way now. Your voice be clear. Your voice touch our lives. In Christ we pray. Uh, we are reaching out to you from Apostolic Faith Church, Nairobi. Christ is powerful in our lives. Uh, our message is part two of make things happen. Last time we shared from Exodus chapter three, where God said things should happen now. And get my children into the right way of living. From slavery to a lad flowing with milk and honey. Let's see other aspects that will facilitate things to happen. Because we are living it at a time whereby we have great people who never become great. We have gifted people who never surface, who never emerge, who never come up. Come up. We have mighty preachers. Who are still oppressed? Actually, what demons are doing and powers of darkness is not to prevent you from feeling great, but to make sure they hamper, they prevent your ability to move, your ability to become practical. People fear becoming practical. They fear risking. Some time for me to become, to, to preach the way God said, because whatever God said was so was okay, but it's, it has to be practiced in this world, in the condition of this world, so it involves some battle. God showed you becoming a rich person. You are becoming rich here, down on earth, whereby it involves some struggle, some risk. People don't want that. But I want to tell you, we must translate you from uh, what we used to see in school, potential energy to kinetic energy, energy in motion. Now, one thing you need to do is overcome and take a position. Overcome and take a start. There is something ahead of you. There is a negative feeling. There is pain. There is uh, uh, like a stronghold that has formed a cloud your family that you are peace when you don't try to do anything extra. When you just remain ordinary, that's when you are peace. When you try to talk about great things, you do not only have problem with surroundings, but even people, your own people, are against you. But from today, I would like to declare that by force, uh, what I heard people say, by force and fire, you rise up, overcome something. There's something around your mind that should be overcome. You should sense that. There's something around your heart, your feeling, that should be overcome. There's something around your fabric that should be subdued. It exists. And now by the grace of God, I appoint you as an instrument to overcome that. You see, if you check the, your Bible in the book of Samuel, chapter 17, you find Goliath was the warrior provided by Philistine. And uh, it, it appears Israel did not have a warrior. And, uh, uh, and Goliath was able to insult, to mock the armies of the living God for 40 days. Saying, you people, if so is your warrior, bring him. And Goliath would just appear and the armies of Israel would run away. And that's when now we see uh, Samuel coming in. If you go first chapter 17, you find now uh, David comes into the battle after being anointed. Because the Bible says after David, you realize for God to bring a church. He has to change your spiritual condition. Yes, it has to be changed. 
it has to be changed. What was required was somebody who was not just ordinary in his strength, but somebody who is strong in God. The Bible says, finally, brethren, be strong in the power of his might. That is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Be strong in the power of his might. What was required in Israel is somebody who is strong in the power of the might of God. Be strong in the power of his might. And that's why in the same book, Ephesians chapter 1, if you, if you go to verse 17, 18, the Bible talks about that ye may know the power that works in, in us. is the power that God used to raise Christ from the dead. There should be a human being in his ordinary strength may not remove things that are really oppressing you. And that's why the Bible says when, when Samuel went to, the, to, 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 uh, went to the house of Jesse, he, he, he anointed David. Aha. And the Bible says when David was anointed, this is what happened. If you check your scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 16. Mm -hmm. Let's see from verse 11. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Said and bring him. For we will not sit down till he comes here. So he sent and brought him in. And now he was a ruddy with bright eyes, good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. I would like us, I would like us to believe today that God is raising somebody to remove shame in a village, to remove shame in a family. To remove shame in a business. And I sense the Holy Ghost speaking to you. You are watching. Yes. It's you. And, 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 and God is saying. Arise. Anoint this one. For it is he. Arise. Anoint him. For it is he. Arise. Anoint him. For this is the one. Father, I pray that this person watching is the one now. You've despised yourself. You thought you are not worthy. But God, the Holy Spirit is being commanded by God the Father. Arise. Anoint this, this one. For it is he. And the Bible says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Our like us to see the effect of what Samuel did. The Bible says, and the spirit, that is capital S, not human spirit, spirit of God. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. That's all. There is what we call a church by the anointing of God. Whereby we can attest and say, and from that day forward, the spirit of God came upon Jane, came upon Jonathan, came upon uh, my brother, my brother Peter, James, whoever you are. And I say now as I speak, receive the appointment. God is is touching you for you are the one and now i release the anointing of god upon you for you are the one and from today as i speak the spirit of the lord come upon you from this day forward and now things will change from now i'm declaring things must change from now in jesus name hallelujah the bible says if you go to chapter 17 now there's this issue. Philistines gathered their armies together to battle. 
and you know there was no every army, Philistines army, Israel army, every army had to release a warrior. And Israel did not have one. But if you check verse 4, Bible talks about the champion who went out from the camp of Philistines. His name was Goriath from Gath. Bible talks about his hate. Bible talks about his helmet. Bible talks about his armor. Bible talks about even the weight of his coat. Bible talk about the cover in his legs. He had bronze armor on his legs. He had bronze javering between his soldiers. How can the Bible spare at least four verses explaining the greatness of the warrior who came out of the enemy? Yes, that's what was being seen. That's what was being seen. But when David went to see his brother, and uh, if you go to verse 17, Jesse said to his son David, Take now for your brothers an effort of this dried grain and these ten rows and run to your brothers at the camp. Carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand and see how your brothers are doing. David arose and went. But what, what he saw, if you go to verse 21, uh, verse 21, Israel and Philistine had drawn up in a battle array, array army against army. And David dressed the supply somewhere. And as he stalked, he realized the armies, the men of Israel, verse 24, and all men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. This could be the experience you have undergone for 10 years. Bible talks about a man and it explains the kind of characteristics, if you go back, the Bibles have about five lengthy verses explaining the armor, the armor, the size, the weight of the giant, of the warrior from the Philistines' army. And, and the men of Israel saw the man. You see, the devil uses senses. They saw they saw the armor, the size, and that was communicated to their mind, and they ran away. That's what happens to people. You go to business, the evil one makes sure that you see how you are draining finances, how things are worse, and that enters through your senses, what you see, and what you hear, and what you touch, and you develop fear, fear. And you start with drawing. What you've heard from your enemies gets your brain, creates fear. You start with drawing. When they saw the man, they ran away. They saw him, they heard from him, they ran away. And, and, uh, and as, uh, as David passed, passed by, verse 25 says, So the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man who has come up? Surely, this man who has come up, surely he has come up to defy Israel. And David spoke, verse 26, to men who stood by. What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised, circumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies? Of the living God. Now, this is remember the anointing on David. When he was anointed, the Spirit of God came upon him in power from that day forward. And then David, with that anointing, goes to the battlefield. He finds people running away from Goliath, and they are talking about the greatness of Goliath. 
and say, have you seen this man? You know, when anointing comes upon you, you don't talk about, have you seen this man? The anointing talks about, have you known the greatness of, our, of my God? Have you seen the move of my God? Have you known the name of the King of Kings? Anointing creates worship of God, but not worship of enemy. However big, however powerful the enemy is, anointing will never talk about the greatness of the enemy. And that's why when David went to the, to the place of the battle, and people said, have you seen this great man? And David said, no way, no way, no way. The anointing in me must destroy this man and have all people worship God because the anointing God is giving you now will bring down everything elevated against the knowledge of God and bring the right worship in business, the right worship in a family, the right worship in your life. It will change the confession of your family. Instead of saying you are getting destroyed, you are running away, you will talk about God restoring you back. God raising a standard. That's why David said, this uncircumcised Philistine must be destroyed. Why? He, is he should not defy the armies of the living God. He will be killed. And that's why when David was taken to Saul, he said, Saul, so I'll handle this man. I killed Bear. I killed Ryan. And he will be like one of them. It must happen. And when David stood before Goliath, he said, you come to me with javelin and all the experience, but I come to you in the name of Jehovah, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. And David killed Goliath. And Goliath fell down. Yes, which means Goliath fell down and died and David destroyed Goliath. Yes, I would like to send this anointing to you. Remember, you are the one. Receive the capacity. Receive the appointment. Receive the calling. Receive the strength. You are the one. And from today, God is sending you to the battle where your children are suffering, where your children are drug addicts, where your family is at oppression. And you are going there with a different confession and anointing. You have been forced to bow to some forces. Parents are developing some diseases, pressure, because your son is commanding that on you. A demon of oppression, financial crisis that you should not undergo. And now the anointing of David is upon you. For you must remove shame now. What you used to run away from, you are running towards it. You may look insignificant, but it's anointing that speaks. You are saying this man cannot defy the armies of the living God. It has to, the condition has to be electrified. And now, I say right now, I speak, the new strength is coming on you. As I speak, the touch of God is coming on you. I say you are being revived, revitalized, renewed, liquid, and you are going to that business not to run away like others. You are going to remove shame. And I command the power to remove shame upon you now. You are not running away again. You are not running away from your wife. You are not running away from your husband. You are not running away from your family. The anointing that God gave David is upon you. Right now, worship God. You are not going to speak about God yet. You are going to speak about the greatness of the living God. You are not going to talk about the armor that God has. You are going to talk about righteousness, the blood of Jesus, the resurrection of our Savior. That will be your confession and the weapon that you elevate. From today, it has happened. God bless you.